Hello, everyone. This is Whitney Well from Star Hearth Astrology. And tonight I'm talking about the new moon in Aries. That perfects in a couple hours from when I'm recording this at about 9, 12 p.m. on the West Coast. On March 31st. And this new moon grabbed me. <laughs> which honestly, right, comes as some relief, right? I mean, we have lots of transits that kind of come and go. Some of them, we notice them because we're paying attention. But I feel like there was a moment today with Aries kind of saying, pay attention to me, which is part of what Aries does, I think, right? But I think that we get thirsty for certain transits that are occurring because astrology is a system that is perfectly balanced in a world that is constantly out of balance, right? In a world that is constantly off kilter, right? Astrology describes the balance. And because it describes the balance in a world that's constantly off kilter, it's very dynamic. And so this Aries new moon feels so striking because I have been deep in Saturn land. And maybe many of us have. Um, but being an Aquarius rising, Saturn has been transiting my first house for two years. It's my Saturn return, crossed my ascendant, opposing my Venus right now, very much in Saturn land. And um, very much feeling alienated from Jupiter, the planet of abundance, right? The other teacher, the teacher that teaches through opportunity that calls to us through expansion rather than contraction and refining and hard work and all the Saturn stuff. Um, and I think I come to this space again and again in my relationship with the planets of each planet right? Each archetype is grateful that they are not the only one, right? It may seem like when we're in a Saturnine space that everything is Saturn. It may seem like when we've been Plutonized, <laughs> when Pluto has come to visit, right? We are kind of putting on Pluto colored glasses, right? The planets themselves and the archetypal forces that they represent and that we can be in relationship to have worldviews. And yet at their heart, just like anything that we can be deeply convinced of in the moment, if we settle in, we know that 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 may be part of the truth, but no planet, no archetypal description of existence is the whole truth, right? The truth is in the dynamic between them. The truth is an ever evolving beast that lives through us and from us and interacts with us as we make our way as part of this poem that moves towards eternity or some dream of eternity. So I just had this moment of, you know, feeling so alienated from Jupiter and then realizing that I was using the Saturnian austerity, the Saturnian prayer that exists in hard work to try and beg Jupiter for some sense of ease, some sense of abundance, some sense of whatever. 
some sense of being welcomed into some kind of belonging. And just as, as when we might, you know, push our partners or our children or our friends into something that's really not well suited for them. Doesn't go so well, right? Saturnian tools are based on scarcity and hardship. They have their own virtues. They allow you to withstand those things, but they do not prepare you for Jupiterian interactions and experiences. Why is this all relevant to Aries? I'm seeing it as relevant to Aries. I mean, right, on the one hand, we've got some big Jupiter transits happening, but I don't think that that's quite it. I think this call into Aries reflects Jupiter's ingress into Aries. I think, right, the astrological world has a tendency to speak of Jupiter as like, Santa Claus, like going around giving out gifts or something, creating abundance wherever. And I have, you know, sometimes I, I just wish that, that would be Jupiter, but I often find that in my experience of Jupiter, it is much more of coming into a space where I'm asking the most questions. Like Jupiter is, is the philosopher, the professor goes in with the flashlight makes you realize wherever Jupiter is it feels much more complicated than you first assumed. And so that sense of abundance or that sense of opportunity comes from paying attention because all of a sudden this thing that you thought that you understood becomes way more fascinating, becomes more of something to dig into. So, right, Jupiter is in Pisces right now. That's kind of the show but Aries comes next. Jupiter will enter Aries on May 10th. So, you know, in just over a month. And Jupiter will be there for a while until the end of October. So we are going to be spending a lot of time with Jupiter and Aries. And so, right, personally, right, you're looking at your chart, you're looking at the whole sign house that Aries occupies for that movement. And you may find that that part of your chart feels hungry. It may have felt like it lost its voice. It lost its faith in itself. It lost its sense of what it was trying to say. Um, its sense of exuberance. Um, and Jupiter comes to do the investigation, to ask the questions, to make it worthy of study, worthy of engagement, and to provide the energy to do so. So, right, the question that I'm really sitting in as an Aquarius rising with Aries in my third house, the house of networking, the house of familiarity, the house of, right, of these connections on a day-to-day -day basis, right, of how we're plugging into that, right? What am I really here to say as an astrologer, as a human? Um, and so that's a question that I'm sitting with because not everything can be Saturn. Not everything is Saturn. Thank goodness. Right? Our, our birth charts are maps of our imbalances. I think if we really want to reach the point of peace and stillness, what we're trying to do is <laughs> neutralize all the parts of our birth chart, right? The planets themselves representing places where we are fixated in certain particular ways. And by kind of massaging them and loosening them, right? We learn that 
we can actually we can actually be flexible that it is not fate that right we came in or we had this understanding of the way that something had to be or the way that we had to be and there's actually much more possibility right it can't be anything saturn there are restrictions but it doesn't have to be what you think that it is And I think that the Aries new moon honors that sense of what you think that it is, right? The Aries new moon says, whatever exists out there, there's something significant in the fact that I am here. The sun will conjoin Chiron tomorrow. Exactly. But the sun is in conjunction with Chiron at this new moon, as is the moon. Mercury is right there. We are having a conference about learning and teaching. Right? Chiron, the teacher, Mercury, the student, the sun, the point, the organizing principle of all of it. What do we have to say? What are we here to do? When that spark is there, this is Aries. Believe in it. There is something divine in it. It's not the whole story. It's just the beginning. And that's what I have to say about the Aries new moon. Sparks, they're not nothing. <laughs>